normally do an interview on Jam Session Chronicles. Normally, we normally do music, but now I have a segment I've created called Conversations with Will. And today I have an interesting, inspiring guest. Uh, his name is Pastor F.N. Williams. He has, uh, he's 92 years old. Uh, he's a remarkable individual. He's still driving. He's been pastoring for 63 years. One church, he's been preaching for longer than that. And I'm just glad to have him here. So we're going to talk to him a little bit about his life and about what God has done for him so far. How you doing, Pastor Williams? Fine, how are you? Man? Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, I want to get right into talking to basically your upbringing. I know you're from Acres Home. Uh, yeah. Can you tell me, where were you born? Born in the Herman Hospital, yeah. Herman Hospital, okay. Yeah. We lived in the Heights on 17th Street. Okay. And uh, that was our home place. Really? Okay. My grandfather came from Washington County and pioneered the Heights. Hmm. Who was your grandfather's your grandfather name? Mike Williams. Mike he Williams, okay. Pastor Gospel Hill Baptist Church down in the bottom here. Wow, I didn't even yeah. know he was a pastor. Okay. Yeah, and uh, that's where I was born. At Herman Hospital. Raised in the Heights and Acres Hall. Okay, what high school you went to? Herman High School. What high school you went to? Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington. Only okay. high school in town. <laughs> okay. So when you left high school, what college did you attend? I uh, went to Bishop College. Went to Bishop College. Yeah, that's, I heard a lot about Bishop. Bishop at that time was in Marshall, Texas. Okay. Yeah. It was in Marshall. Marshall, Texas. So it moved to Dallas. Do you remember when it moved to yeah, Dallas? Yeah, when it moved, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Pastor, when did you accept that Christ as your personal Savior? Well, I was about seven, between seven and eight years old. Okay. I was sitting on the third pew from the rear. It wasn't a pew, then it was a bench. Mm. Uh, cross bench, this old, old folk put together a bench. And I heard my father climax in his message. He was talking about Jesus' uh, death, burial, and resurrection. And he said he did it for you. And when he said did it for you, I, I, I opened my eyes and then I heard him say, come. And I came walk down the aisle and I came on and accepted Christ. Wow. And uh, my father was George, my mother was George, some people were George. There was a lady here, Miss, Miss Taylor. Okay. And she was a nice old missionary. You going to baptize that boy? <laughs> my daddy said, I didn't tell him to come up here. He came on his own. That's a blessing. So what church was this at? Was this at? Yeah, that is. It was at Antioch. Yeah. Wow, wow, that's a blessing. Well, well, let me ask you this. How old were you when you first accepted your call to preach? Well, let's see. Well, I must have been my senior year at high in Booker T. Washington. Must have been 17, 16, 17 years old. Senior. Really? I was my senior year. Never shall forget. Hmm. Boy, I didn't want to preach. I wanted to be a racketeer. <laughs> football floor was very famous then. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be black football. Mm -hmm. So I had a gang. I carried a little gang around the campus, you know, and work kind of thing like that. But then that thing grabbed me and hit me so hard preaching. I didn't want to preach. And one of the boys that got to fight with all the camp said, Hey, man, you're going to preach. And boy, we were going after him. Wow. And uh, but I never should give a Lord show. He said that I went after him because I wanted to preach. But I got up that morning, my mother had picked some pancakes and uh, ham and eggs. I sat down to eat breakfast and I took that first bite of those pancakes and I couldn't swallow them. Mm. I just, so my mama thought I had done something wrong. She said, what's the matter, what you doing, you in trouble? Said no. So she had to say, my daddy, my daddy was sitting in the bed saying, Hun, I'm flooding, not eating his breakfast, he's crying. Ain't nothing wrong with him, he don't want to preach, he got to preach, he don't want to preach, ain't nothing wrong with him. And they just got to preach, and I ain't, I ain't getting up for that. <laughs> Go to school, boy. <laughs> that was rough back then, yeah, boy. Yeah, and there was a teacher that named Miss Miller. Miss Miller was a teacher, she's an old teacher, she had taught my daddy. She taught my auntie and all, and so she, my teacher, and uh, I was coming home. She said, "Well, William, preach, boy." Wow. So I mean, it was like it was confirmed so many times. Confirmed so many times, yes. Yeah, so. Wow. So when you, and I know it's probably is a crazy question, but when you became preach, who ordained you? Your dad ordained you. Dad ordained you. Ordained you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let me ask you a question. When you, uh, after you became a preacher and you were preaching, 
um, who did you kind of aspire to be? Like, I know your dad was very pivotal, <laughs> but I had to be some other guys. That you know, I'll say this, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll sound ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I never had an aspiration like that. Really? I never saw no man that I really wanted. I, I, I hate my father uh -huh. and my grandfather, that kind of thing uh -huh. like that. But as far as being like him, oh, and that was my that was your thing. Wow. My desire was to be all that God wanted me to be. Amen. And so I left with him. Amen. Uh, yeah. So wow. I didn't try to ape nobody or practice like somebody. I let him do all the stuff. Wow. Wow. So what in that case then, what are your methods of preparation? I mean, I know you've been preaching for you. How long have you been preaching? I know you've been pastoring been this church for seventy five years. Seventy five years. Well, how long have you been pastoring, period? I know you oh, pastored some Gabbard. Well, pastored give me that story. Six three years, I pastored eight years to country. Six to three plus eight as well. <laughs> 63 plus eight is what? Uh 672. 71, 72. Yeah, okay. So how long you been uh what, what did you pastor before you came to Antioch? I know you My were... first church was Matthew, uh, Red Union in Matthews, Texas. Okay. Seven miles outside of Eagle Lake, seven miles from Ward. Can you tell me how did you get that church? Did somebody assign you? Did your dad send you? No, I went to the service. Okay. I went to the service and I, was, I, I came home on front alone. And um, the Independent Association was having a board meeting at, uh, at the German Covers Church over here on the street. At that time, okay. Reverend Jenkins was the pastor. Okay. He was he was like his moderator association, and um, I attended that meeting that day. That day, the preacher that was supposed to preach didn't show up. Wow. I'm in uniform. <laughs> Dr. Lucas, A. E. Lucas, late Pastor Good Hope. Yes. Church. Yes. Dr. Lucas said that Matt, let that boy preach. Let that boy pray that place. <laughs> Come here, boy. You go preach, sir. So I preached. And in that audience was a lady named Ms. Lytha Riggins and Nathaniel Hurd, deacon and a missionary from that church. They heard me preach. When I got through preaching and coming out, they met me at the door. And she said to me, when you get out, call us. Mm. Now, I wasn't planning on getting out. I still have another um, some more time to do. Yeah. I said, man, I'm in service. She said, yes, calls when you get out. So I did get out. My, my unit was getting ready to go to Korea. Uh, Colonel Muse, whose daddy come out of Brookshire, Texas. He was a black colonel. Mm -hmm. He knew my dad and my family. He said, Floyd, it's too cold in Korea. You ain't going to no Korea. Come up here, boy. <laughs> and I had 30 more days. Yeah. Before I could be discharged. Mm -hmm. He wrote those days, these days off and gave me a discharge and sent me home. So I got home, uh, old Lee, uh, my old lady said to me, Why don't you call those people? The lady said, call. I said, oh, I ain't bought those people. I don't want to bother them. Mm -hmm. What about no church? She said, at least give the people courtesy. So I called. Mm -hmm. I said, Miss Wiggins? Yes. I said, it's FN Wiggins. I said, I'm home. Thank you, Reverend. We'll call you back. They called back. That's when they come out and preach one sermon. And they had, oh, wow, they had you to pass. So after the church in Matthews, where did you go to after that? Uh, then I went to Friendship Church in Eagle Lake. Okay. I pastored Billy Union and Matthews and Friendship in Eagle Lake. I pastored those two churches for eight years. Then I went, to, I was called to uh, uh, Senior Moment. Church there in Wharton, Texas. Gotcha. Okay. And on my way to Beaumont, mm. St. John had asked me to come down and preach because my friend, Dr. Roy Allen, had gone to Detroit and he had asked the people to hear me preach. That's all. He said, oh, Just hear him preach. I'm going to tell you to call him. Just hear him preach. And uh, they had asked me to come down and I came went to on my way to Beaumont to preach that Sunday night. Mm. I preached that Sunday night. They called me that week. Wow. Yeah, one time. That's an interesting story. That's an interesting story. Let me, let me what a question. Now, who were, and I know that this probably is a broad question, but who were some of your friends? Were A.A. Lucas a friend of yours? Mm -hmm. or no? A.A. A. Lucas from Good Old. Was he a friend of yours? That's a person. <coughs> that Lucas was old enough for my dad. Okay, so he was old. Okay. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't 
you, you didn't run with anybody. You know, you didn't run, come right with them guys, boy. You, you stayed in your place. Gotcha. We couldn't even, if they was tired of talking, and we woke up, you couldn't walk and say nothing. Wow. And wait till they say, yeah, boy, what you want? Other than that, you better be quiet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> they you down. So who were some of your friends that you well, kind of... Well, Paley, uh, Samuel Smith. Okay. Back there, yeah, he's by. You probably you probably have very few of them yeah, alive. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, Only yeah, Samuel Smith. Yeah, all all the guys that uh, that uh, uh, Strowman, okay, uh, Clovis Johnson, Clovis Johnson. I remember him. Uh, uh, Dixon, ha, I know Hobbs. Ha, was ha, your best. Ha, my man, man, hey, A.E. McCardell. Gotcha. Um, Okay, and McCarty. Books, all those guys. Guys, guys, okay, yeah. So, well, let me ask you a question. I know that, you know, I wasn't around, but I heard about it because I was really young, but I heard about you having Rap Abba at the year. Uh, didn't you have him here one year? I had Dr. King here first. Okay, you had Dr. King, okay. Uh, the, the stuff is not clear in Houston. Okay. The first time Dr. King came to Houston, we had to organize a minister's group to get him here. Because when Dr. McCarty made the contact through Dr. Bill, A.W. Okay. Bill, okay. His physician, who uh, was over the Riverside Hospital, not Riverside, the hospital out in the uh, Fifth Ward. Okay. Uh, what's in the hospital? Uh, they closed it. Jefferson? Is that uh, the. Anyway, he, he okay. over there. Okay. Bill was an activist. Okay. So he and McCarty had made contact with SCLC to have Dr. Keeley come and use Okay. Nobody would touch it. Wow. The news media got on the newspaper. Preachers trying to stir up trouble here in Houston. We're doing fine in Houston. We don't need Dr. King in Houston. First time. Mm. We had to organize. So when SCLC had a rule, no individual church could invite Dr. King to, to, to the city. It had a good organization. Mm. We went to the Church of God in Christ, the Methodist Inn, both Methodist groups and the Baptist group. Nobody would back us. Mm. So we organized men northwest of the Bible. <laughs> okay, wow. As pastors and, mm -hmm. and, and they sent a letter from my organization. And he came to he came to Houston first. Dr. Uh, Judson Robinson was in council first. Okay. He was council at large at that particular year. Okay. And he had secured uh, the auditorium okay. as a symbol for the for our affair. Mm -hmm. When the papers put all that stuff out, we don't need King here. The yeah. Negro said we don't need him. I heard about that. Yeah. They put it out and put us in the Coliseum. Mm. And they just had the rodeo. They just had the rodeo. Oh. And they put us in the Coliseum. We couldn't turn around. Yeah. But we couldn't well, we couldn't get 500 Negroes to attend the fact. <laughs> and he came Jackson in. had a relationship with Harry Belafonte. Okay. Called Harry. Will you come to Houston and do a prior concert before Dr. King? He said, yes, he can. We still couldn't get 500 Negroes. Mm. We called him and I had about two, 300 people. We put Dr. King up to speak. He wasn't up 30 minutes before a stink bomb was thrown in there. We had to get oh. him out of there. So he, sp he spoke here. He spoke at McCardell's. Mm -hmm. They went back up. Yeah. Now the papers talk about his company with Dr. Lawson. Yeah. That was when Franklin Beauty School, Dr. King had got his promise in. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. So the beauty school wanted to come to this back Lord show. Gotcha. That's how he came. That's how they covered that. Yeah. Okay. They wouldn't cover our stuff. They wouldn't cover it. Wow. Wow, that's that's amazing. I mean, yeah, so Dr. King, he came here and he went to Emma yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. Dr. King was singing that seat right there when I was, you remember, you know, you don't remember. All the political meetings of the Democratic Party was out here that it was yeah. over that area. I heard about it. I wasn't around, every but I heard meeting, about it. Every yeah. time they had a meeting, it was that area. So Martin was sitting there because he toured the community. Phone rang, I asked the phone, and it was, uh, 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 see you 
You were definitely allowed to have those. Go ahead, okay. Chris Dixon, Dixon. was a Democratic okay. court. Okay. Attorney Chris Dixon. Okay. He called me about the meeting. William, we set for Thursday night. I said, yeah, we ready, man. Come in. So he asked me to say, uh, oh, you a Democrat? I said, yeah, man. <laughs> he said, who you think sticking the dogs on me and putting me in jail? I said, Democrats. <laughs> he said, vote for the best person, not supporting. Gotcha. We're well, gonna benefit you and your people. That's who you support. Yeah. Because they're all white. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And so I've been doing that ever since. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you had a pretty lengthy year in that. Uh, we had ever left the cup. Yeah, Abilene I remember that. Year. I heard Ralph, about that. Ralph came for four, for five years straight. Really? They spoke five every King Day. Every King Day. See, the first one of the King to operation in the United States of America was here. I know. I know about that. That's the first. Do you remember the year that was? I know it was a long time ago. <coughs> was it before it was he died right after, after died? Right after when, they, when Congress was in session and they were debating on when they were going to have the day. Okay. I was coming from Detroit. Okay. And uh, on the plane, I said, I don't need this white folk to tell me when to celebrate my man. Mm -hmm. We do it ourselves. Mm. So the Baptists, Houston Men's Against Crime, yeah. and the uh, uh, Houston Baptist Men's Fellowship mm -hmm. set together. I did that. Wow. Yeah. 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 Well, let me ask you a question. And moving from the civil rights, what are some of your, what are the keys that you would ever like to share that's to your longevity at one church? Because one church, 63 years, I mean, that's a long time to do anything. So well, what, what are some of the keys? Does. I always realize one thing. First, who called me? Amen. Secondly, who does the church belong to? Amen. It belongs to the man they called me. Exactly. So I follow his rule. Amen. I don't I don't be in front of the Bible. Yeah. Whatever the Bible says what I do. That's because I don't have a seven deacons. Yeah. Why in the world does Jesus have <laughs> 3,000 people and had seven deacons. Yeah. Yeah. You got 200 members, you got 25 deacons. 25 deacons. <laughs> That's scheming. Yeah, true. That's scheming. That's so true. I, I, if I had been an uncle at all, I tried to do his will. Amen. And I never feared mankind. Amen. But man could do to me. Amen. I have faith in God. Amen. I believe that God can do anything but fail. So I never did no tricks, no scheme, nothing like that. Never, never took the money from the church abusively. Gotcha. But the church gonna take care of me. Of course. According to scripture. According to scripture. That's so true. everything the Bible says, that's what I follow. Amen. Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. This is this is a question I want to ask because maybe sometime when you're working at anything, you get you may not get tired of it, but you get tired in it. Was it ever a time when you <coughs> thought about resigning? A time you ever thought about just quitting ministry altogether? Has no, ever a time? really, I guess maybe I'm an awkward person. No, no, no. <laughs> it's I okay. Am, really. No, I really, I am. I never thought about quitting. I, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I thought about I thought about changing. Gotcha. I understand. Because I never want to pass the naked Yeah. <laughs> So what, what what would make the reason I why you didn't want to? I never wanted to live with the pastor Houston. I never wanted to pastor you. Yeah. God had to plant me here. To do that. To do yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. And for sixty three years, of course, we know it was God. Yeah. When yeah. you didn't even want to when you didn't even want to do that. I what, guess maybe because my, my father was out here, my grandfather, I know Aquitone. Gotcha. Aquitone never was favorable to the Williams. Gotcha. Okay. They never had nothing good to say about it. And I wonder why. We are survivors. We survive. That's what we just survive. Nobody ever, nobody ever. They didn't like us for some reason. Yeah. And I don't understand it because y'all had so much input in this community. Is that maybe because of it? was it a political maybe, disliking? Maybe, maybe because we, we never begged for nothing. Gotcha. We did the Lord's will. Because the Lord took care of Amen. See? I never should get with that built education bill back here. Every time put in a newspaper, the pastor builds a, uh, a, a motel on top of the church. 
How did they get Motel out of Christian education building? God. <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. A motel. Yeah, yeah. God. Well, let me ask, let me, well, this is personal for me because yeah. I'm a historian and yeah. I wasn't around when your father passed away. He died in 1958. Yeah. And of course, that's way before my time. Yeah. Uh, what kind of man was he? What kind of, well, first of all, what kind of preacher was he? Was he? Oh, was he's, he, he's well of a preacher. Okay. Uh, you know, I get him. You go get him. He go get him. <laughs> He never worried about time. If the choir sang a long time and the people shout, shout together, he sit right there. It may be nine o'clock at night, and he, and he had three service all day. All day. Wow. He believed in the church being active 365 days. There was something going on here every day, mm. church wise. I never should get one night. 9.30, the choir was singing and shouting this time. <laughs> so I thought to myself, I'm going to go home. I thought maybe he'd say, well, we ain't had it, I'm going to sell people where to sit down and we're going home. Mm -hmm. He said, well, you all enjoyed your own self. We had a spiritual time. Now I'm going to take my time. <laughs> oh, <coughs> I wish had, I had known him. Yeah, and, he, and, he, and he, put, he stood up there for the minute. And he preached. He preached, yeah. yeah. Wow. What kind of preacher was your grandfather? Do you remember your grandfather at all? Grandfather was, was, my grandfather was an intellectual preacher, okay. but okay. fiery. Okay. And he stood six feet, about six feet two. Mm. Uh, grandpa wore frock tail coats all the time. <laughs> oh, man, he was clean. And he wore a 38 all the time. All the time. 38 is his pistol. Pistol. <laughs> all the time. Every day time you saw my grandpa. He yeah, had a better pistol. He'd tell the sheriff, now you know I packed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so but he but so he was one of the ones that bought he was the one of the ones that had the property on seventeenth Street first, That's correct? Right, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he came, he rode the train from Washington County, Texas. Hmm. Got off on the up there on Shepherd. That's where the state used to be on Shepherd and uh and and uh Washington Avenue. Okay. What trains what train used to be. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. I know that you've got such a long history. I don't want to keep you too long. I mean, you've done great things in civil rights. You've done things, you know, in the military. You went to the army, the service. Yeah. So you got so much and so much a body of things that God has done with you through all different. Can you can you just tell me basically, uh, looking back on your life <clears throat> when you were younger, what are some of the things that happened that prepared you for ministry? You know, God prepares us for what he has prepared for us. So what was that thing that happened in your life? You say, you know what, now I see why I had to go through that. Now I see why this worked out. Uh -huh. is there any, you know, you can say in your life where you can say, now I see why God did this. Or Is there anything hindsight you know, uh, uh, that happened that prepared you for ministry? Only thing that I, I can't see nothing that prepared me for ministry. Okay. But faithfulness is the truth. Amen. I think that my parents were easy Gotcha. In the church, okay, or close to the church, gotcha. and 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 being a uh, kindred relation to preachers. Amen. See, my great grandfather was a, was a circuit rider. Mm, okay, he was an Indian preacher. Okay, really? Yeah, he was my he was my grandfather, great grandfather. Okay, then my grandfather. Okay, then my dad. Okay, and myself. Okay, and I do. Okay. So I think I think I think I think God set that path. That's that thing up, yeah. Nothing I aspire to do, because I like I say, we've done it, we've done it, we've done it yet. I want to be no preacher, man. I yeah. want to be the biggest racketeer. <laughs> That's amazing because you've done so well and been doing it so long, but ain't nobody but God. <coughs> nobody but God, excuse me. Nobody yes, sir. but God. Yes, sir. I, I can't contribute nothing to my development. Gotcha. Mm. I can't take a nothing of my preparation, but his guidance. But, uh, but his guidance, amen. And I tried to walk according to his word. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Yeah. Well, as we wrap this up, let me ask question. What is your go-to hymn? Everybody got a hymn they like. Uh, what is your, I know there's a lot of them, but what is your go-to hymn? What is when you, but you really like this hymn. Now, it, it's one of your favorite ones. Now, one of my favorite hymns is, uh, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. Okay. Lord, the Thou withdraw thyself from me, my 
Amen. Amen. Yeah, I like to preach if I ain't careful. That's what that's what's gonna come out. That's what come out. Wow. Now I like tears so sweet. To trust, trust in Jesus. Jesus. I love that. Song. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, that's my that's one of my go to yeah, as well. So I mean those are those 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 things kinda keep me young, yeah. Yeah, so, man. Uh I've been dead, close to death. Amen. I was dying. Yeah. I told the Lord to come get me. I was tired. I forgot about that. They gave me a shot about 12 30 that night uh -huh. in the hospital. Uh -huh. Son broke that morning and said, Lord, come back. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. <laughs> Forget that. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, Pastor, look, I thank you so much. You've been such an inspiration to what we're doing, and I'm trying to. Uh, I, I enjoy speaking with you, enjoy yeah. talking with you. Thank you so much for your yeah. time. Yeah. I don't want to keep you too long. Is there anything you would like to share with a younger pastor? I think you've also talked about what <coughs> kept you. Kept you you well, can either I echo tell, it or I you can... young pastors, anyway, first thing, don't attempt to be great. Amen. 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 Attempt to be spiritually influenced. Amen. Let the Holy Ghost go. Because I ain't never worried about being big shot, good shot. Mm -hmm. I drove flashy cars because I wanted to. Yeah. Not because I was trying to be impressive to them. I understand. In other words, if there's a short word, be yourself according to what God wants you to be. And that's it. Amen. Well, God bless you, Pastor. Thank you so much, so much for your time. Okay. I've definitely enjoyed it. Thank you for joining us. Please like, share, and, and subscribe to this channel. And stay tuned for more great conversations and more great music. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much.